Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we've got a uh, an ambassador here. This is the Silver Max Ambassador. I think it's the 3600. It's well used. A lot of the uh, uh, the indications are sort of worn off in that, but that's all right. Uh, keep these things serviced, and they'll run for a long time to come. Well, in testing this one, which came in from Philip, this has got a very rough retrieve. It feels as though either you've got a bent uh, Paul for the line guide or that there's something trapped inside because there's a skip you can see as I bring my hand turning the reel that it well it's just very uneven so a lot of times that's just dried grease sometimes it's broken parts and well you never really know until well, you take the reel apart and you service it and you try to identify what the issues are and correct them so what's, that's what we will do today. We'll do a full service of this reel and we'll try and make sure that we can service it so that we can get that skip to go away and uh, hopefully restore this reel, give it a second chance. Well, we're going to start by taking off the exterior pieces. That involves the, the cap that uh, holds the nut uh, for the handle down. And then, of course, the handle and the star adjuster and the side plates and things like that. While I do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you like the art of fishing reel repair, if you like to uh, see how reels are made, if you like to understand a little bit more of them, well then I would encourage you to subscribe to all uh, 25,000 or almost 25,000 subscribers. Thank you for all it is that you've uh, done to help make this channel successful. Well, we've removed the handle nut. Now there's an E-clip here that holds the, the gear post to the bridge. This is a C-clip or an E-clip. Most of the time you can work that out with your finger. Just be careful that you can't shoot very quickly. And well, you can lose that and then you're going to go on quite a search to uh, find out where it landed. With the clip removed, you can take the handle off. And all the pieces and parts that I take off, they go into a parts tray. That way I know where they are when it comes time to reinstall. I'm going to take one more piece off here. And that is the star adjuster. And then I'm going to remove the side plate. And that will be our first view into what might or might not be going on here. So these are a little bit smaller in profile than the more traditional uh, ambassadors. You can see that it's a smaller diameter to the frame. But the frame is about the same size. These two reels are great for inshore fishing, for bassing nice little casting reels and uh, well they're in the line of the ambassadors and uh, they make, made these in the silver and they also made them in the black well let's see if we can get that off we can uh, spool comes off this is held on by a clip let's get the clip off it's a little clip on a cap here that needs to be removed the or you can remove that axle shaft. That's this clip here is holding it on. So just take that off, put that right back into your cap, put your cap into the parts tray, and now you can remove the axle shaft. Well, we, do, we can do a couple of tests here now. So let's put the axle shaft in and spin the spool. <clears throat> that kind of eliminates any issues in the hang up with the spool itself. I did notice that the brakes are out a little bit. It could be that the brake <coughs> may have been trapped in the ring. Looks like this reel has uh, uh, not been serviced in a while. You can see how the grease is puddled to the bottom here. Look, while we have that out, let's take a moment now. This is the drive for your line guide. So let's drive the line guide. That's turning freely, so there's not an issue here with the, uh, the line guide being the cause of the rather erratic performance but while we have that off I'm going to take a moment I'm just going to spray this down with a, little, with a little cleaner on both sides this grease that's in here I'm not sure what it is it might be a hot sauce I'm not sure but whatever it is it's puddled in here pretty good and uh, it's gotten squeezed out and about it's all over the frame, so I'm going to use that cleaner and a cotton swab to reach those hard places. See if I can't get that old grease out of the tracks and out of the way. 
when you're doing your fishing reel service and repair, you have the opportunity to clean all the pieces and parts since your reel will be uh, completely disassembled. So go ahead and take your time to do that. We've seen that the um, line guide is moving free and easily. I'm still going to take the time to service the pole and the line guide. And to do that, remove the cap. And gently tap the line guide pole will generally fall out. You want to check the pole for the shoulders. Make sure that you do not have any grease on either side of that. And you want to check the points on the pole and make sure that they're even. In this case, they are. And we saw that, well, there just wasn't any issues with the, the line guide performance itself. Check the line guide if it's got a lot of old grease and debris and the like in there. Take your time. Spray it down with something like a penetrating oil. Run a uh, paper towel or something over it to get the, the grease out of the tracks. Remove the worm gear if you need to, but if you don't need to, you don't have to remove the worm gear as part of the service. And uh, that way you can make sure that when you go to reinstall, everything is working fine. You'll notice that right now I've just got my finger on the pole. I want to make sure it properly seats before I put the cap back on. And this is always a little struggle for me because, well, i got big fingers. But it looks like, well, it looks like we've got it on. And then once you tighten the cap down, just do it again. Make sure that it runs nice and free and easy, which is what it's doing here. We can set that assembly aside. We can take our spool. The spool has a bearing in it. We've tested that already. That was running fine. And uh, there's a, I believe it's a bearing on this side. So let's go ahead and put the oil on that side. I oil my bearings. I don't grease them. We'll put that on. And again, I think we may have seen possibly a uh, trapped break because this one looks like it uh, it may have been trapped in there. I'm not sure. So let's go over here now. We're going to turn this, see if it's turning free and easy. Well, it's kind of hard to, to do that because right now the uh, drag is not in place. But from what I can tell, it doesn't appear to be much of a hang up there. So let's go underneath and check for break, broken parts and we'll also service this just like you would service the reel if, while you didn't have any bad performance going on there. So we'll remove the two screws that hold the case on. And this is a good time to tell you to take pictures while you're working. Now, I'm taking pictures, I'm doing a video. But uh, when you're working on a reel, take the pictures at critical points. That's going to tell you how the pieces and parts lined up. And uh, well, if you get stuck on the reassembly, it's a reference point for you. We have a couple of washers left on the skier sleeve, but I'm going to just pull the case up now. And this is a good place to take the picture of what your assembly looks like next. When I turn this over, I'm going to knock out a couple of these little tension washers. They belong on the gear sleeve, uh, on the top side, behind the handle. Well, we have an instant anti-reverse here. You don't want to do anything with that other than make sure it's clean. And we have a lot of this grease that's puddled here. So whoever serviced the reel last time was pretty liberal with the grease. But what's happened here is it's probably stored like this and uh, oops, like this. And gravity over time will work. All the greases that are in here will settle to the bottom and that's probably what happened. So my guess is this is probably stored in a rod rack like that. And over time the, the greases have worked their way down. Well, you saw that the next thing we can remove is the entire gear assembly. And underneath here we have some dried greases as well. We also have dried greases up around that yoke, so we'll take care of that next. This is your uh, tensioner, your spring assembly. Good place to take a picture here. And this should be able to be pulled up and out. Sometimes that grease tends to act like a... Um, glue. So just be careful with that. Notice you have a little spring assembly here that's going to hold your, your jack in place. We'll take the yoke off. 
take a picture. You've got a yoke assembly here. On the yoke assembly on the back end is a ramp on both sides. So recognize that there is a front and a back to that piece. And notice that your pinion gear has a slotted side and a gear side. The slotted side faces in for your spool. There's a little T on the spool here, 180 degree rod coming through, and that's what that slot is going to grab there. Do a good job of cleaning off the yoke. Get rid of all of the old greases. This is pretty clean with all that grease having seeped out. If you need to knock some pieces out, just use a brush. The, the tracks are nice and clear. They're also uniform. And what we can do, rather than put this back in a parts tray, is well, we can just put it back together again with a nice healthy coating of grease. We'll set that into the assembly. Again, look for the ramp side. There's a slope on one side. It's right here. That's going to be the side that faces the spool and the side of the pinion gear with the slot sits in that side. I'm just going to put that in my parts tray now assembled. We can take the tensioner piece and put that in. Next up then would be to go to your gear assembly here. There's a lot of old grease on the back end of that click ratchet, so we want to take care of that. And while I'm doing that, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, if you leave that question in the comment section, I will try to answer that question for you, maybe get you back on track. I work on a lot of reels, so just because this one happens to be an Abu Ambassador, don't be afraid to ask a question on a, a spinning reel or a low profile bait caster or the like. Well, I've been checking, making sure that the uh, teeth are all uniform and that they're clean, just like we did with that pinion gear. They are, and so I'm installing a fresh coat of grease there. If you're wondering what this big gear on the back side of the main is, that's the one that's driving this little gear over here on the side for the level wind. What that means is that when you go to cast this reel and you disengage the spool, that line guide will not move. And when it doesn't move, the best way to ensure that you have a good and accurate cast is to center that line guide uh, before you uh, make a throw. That way the, the line travels the least back and forth in the spool and increases casting distance. We have three, uh, I believe these are carbon tax or hard washers. They don't get any grease. You have a round washer. You have an eared washer with the points, and then you have a cap washer that has that raised section. So the flat round washer, oftentimes called a keyed washer, goes in first. Second of your hard washer, and the middle washer is the one with the tabs on it. They fit into the recess in the main gear. And then the last one. Now these are hard washers. Just make sure they're clean. But don't attempt to make them feel like they're flexible and move it back and forth. Chances are you'll snap it. And if you snap it, you'll have to replace it. Okay, this is the main gears cap washer. And then you have the um, gear sleeve that's going to sit on that shaft. It's going to be the inner piece for the anti-reverse clutch. And it's also going to be the spacer that you put pressure on from your um, star adjuster. There's three more pieces on this. They're dirty, so let's take them off. We have the jack. This is going to move the yoke in and out and create the free spool. You have the little uh, arm here. This is the trip lever arm. It comes from the back checking to make sure it's clean. I also wanted to make sure that the bridge was open here so that I could mop up anything that was left. And we have a burring in the back side here which we're going to oil. With that oil then we can go right back and put that arm for your trip lever in. We can grab the jack. 
Now we can go to our parts tray for reassembly, get the yoke, and remember you want the one that has the ramp and the slotted pinning gear facing forward. That would go next. And then we have our tensioner spring. The two ones with the tags are going to go on the bars here on the yoke. You want to center this over the two slots. And there's a post in the back here. I'm trying to get this click ratchet here over. To do that, push up on this bar. You'll see that you have the clearance here. And as you push in, this little white spring here is going to put tension onto this uh, uh, jack. So that's the way it should be installed uh, going forward. That's going to hold it in place. All right, we've greased, oil, checked the, uh, the drag washers. They're all nice and clean. We're going to put that down and install that next. And then we can go reinstall the case. I was just checking. I was wondering if we had a, a bearing there or not. Well, the spool is going to come through here. We can put a little bit of oil on there. I don't think we have that bearing. While you have this off, take a moment, grab a uh, cotton swab and just clean up the, the old dirt that may be in those little nooks and crannies there. Now we can go reinstall that. Now you notice we didn't spray down that uh, anti-reverse clutch. That runs dry, so you don't want to put oils or greases on there. If it was greasy, you would want to go and take a cotton swab and just wipe down and remove any of the old greases. And you saw that we, we dried off the cap washer that rides inside the clutch, so that should give it the appropriate tension. Well, I'm thinking we either had that grease puddle or we had one of these brakes trapped in the race that was causing that issue because everything else on this wheel says that, well, it's, it's doing nicely. We have our two tension washers. They are bowed. Don't attempt to flatten them out. They don't belong flat. I like to put the bow or the, the curb facing upward on the first, downward on the second. You can put them in any way you want. They do control the tension of the star adjuster. This is your cap with the spool tensioner. That's going to enable you to uh, reduce or increase the tens tension on the axle shaft to slow or speed up the revolutions of the spool. Next up, we want to get the star adjuster on. Just take your time. Patience is everything. You want to make sure that you've got your star adjuster going on square. If it doesn't go on square, you're going to risk cross-threading it. And if you cross-thread it, 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 it will strip the the threads and uh, well you'll have nothing but problems with the reel and with the adjuster. I'm just holding the tip here. Put that down tight so that I can make sure that we spin nice and easy and we are. Next up then we can put the tensioner the, uh, washer that goes between the star adjuster and the handle. Then the handle then you go to your tray, find that E-clip that we took off, find the groove on top of that post, and pull that in. And a lot of times you can do this one with hand strength like I did there. If you need an assist, go get a pliers and pull it in that way. And we'll take our handle nut.
tighten that down. Do as much of that by hand again for the same reason you don't want to cross strip that nut on the post. And then you should be able to align that handle nut on a uh, perpendicular to the screw hole. And if you do that, the cap normally fits and the screw is normally lined up with the hole in the handle so that you can tighten that right down. All right, I want to make sure that we have the brakes pulled in here. The centrifugal brakes. And then we can go ahead and do two things. The first thing I like to do here is to pull out that um, free spool release. You're going to merge your little stud here on that um, uh, thumb bar with the inner portion of that. So come on across, line everything up. Once you line that up, you can tighten down your side plate screws, one on each side, 180 degrees apart. We'll be ready to give this thing a little test, see how we did. So my guess is it was those brakes that were probably trapped inside that uh, ring. That's uh, one of the things that's a fairly common issue. The, the side plate comes off, the rings expand out, and when you go to put the side plate back on, they trap. Let's uh, let's give it a turn. Well, look at that, would you? We've got a nice, smooth operating reel. Let's make sure that we go on the free spool. This is what I was saying about casting. Since this will not move when you're casting, notice I can turn the spool, and uh, that line guide does not move right now. So when you go to cast, center that uh, line guide. Make sure it snaps back. It does. This one's ready to go fishing again. So that's how you do it. That's how you do a little bit of problem diagnosis. What we did was we cleaned the entire reel. We made sure that the line guide was working properly. We uh, took the cap off and we serviced the pole by uh, cleaning out the shoulders on it and making sure that the grooves and the worm gear were clear. We opened up the side case so that there might be a little bit of an issue on the spool. We certainly lubricated uh, the bearings on the spool. Took the main gears out, cleaned up the old greases, made sure everything is ready to go, and sure enough, it's ready to go. So I hope you've enjoyed that. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you to all of our first responders and essential personnel, our police, fire, rescue, first aid, and the like, for all it is that you do. To everyone, keep your reels ready to go fishing. The fish are out there. It's prime season. Make sure you take the time to get on the water and enjoy the sport. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.